Hello YouTube, I'm Tom and Brad, and today we're going to have a look at making our own map in Seven Days to Die. So let me start from the beginning. We'll go to the home page. You're going to need to download a program called King Gen. So I go to the search bar and there it is. I'll just click on that, King Gen. And this is the link I'm going to use. It's from the Seven Days to Die community page to King Gen Random World Generator for Seven Days to Die. Ooh. This is the page right here. And it's up to version 9 that just came out. I think it was just this morning it changed to version 9. I'm going to download the Windows version. And it's stored on SourceForge. So you have to wait for the counter to count down. And you can see down there it's downloading. Once it's downloaded, I'm just going to use the show and folder option and I can see there it is there. And from here, I can just simply double click on it to open the program. Now it doesn't do an installation. It just runs the actual file itself and Windows is complaining about it. And the only option you can see here is don't run. But what you need to do is click on more info and then say run anyway. Obviously you do this at your own risk, but I've done it a few times now and it seems fine. And here's the opening screen. Now from here, let's just have a quick look at what we've got. This is the name of the world that we're going to create. So you can call it whatever you want. I'm just going to leave it at the default name for the minute. And then we've got some options for the sizes of the world that we want to create. So let's have a quick look at that. The smallest size we can make is 4K. So that's 4K by 4K. And then we've got 6K and so on, all the way up to 16. I'm going to start with the smallest one just for speed. Although I've got to be honest with you, it is very quick. If you want to type in a seed there, you can do, but you can just leave that blank. And at this point, I haven't told it anything about the world that I want to create. I'm just going to test it out and see what it does with all of the default settings. So if I click on generate world now, you can see it runs through various things. And eventually we will see something that looks like this up here, appear here. And it should tell us at the end how long it's taken. It's pretty quick there. So it did, it took it 11 seconds. And there's the map that we're given. So this is 4K wide by 4K tall. So it's pretty small. But if you have a look at what's on the map, it's quite varied. So this is without telling it any settings at all. It's given us these little towns and cities. And these are all color codes for what type of building or area that it is. Obviously, you can see that that's a snow biome. And then that one there is a desert biome and you can see lakes. So let's have a look at what these buildings are. These orange ones, first of all, if we have a look, you can see that they are old residential buildings. Then the yellow ones are the new residential. Then the green is the downtown. So there's a chance of getting a skyscraper or two. And further on, the purple ones, we've got commercial. And then the blue ones are industrial. So there's a good variety of things. The other things you can see here are the red ones. Now, they are uh, random POIs that are out in the wilderness. So there may not be a road going to them. And speaking of roads, look what it's done. It's linked each of these towns or villages with roads. Also shown on the map, you can see these little white diamonds. They are potential spawn points. So when you start the game, there's a chance that you will start in one of those. And you can see by the shape of this, what it's done is it's made it like an island. It's put this little jagged edge around it. And you can just sort of see this line going along the bottom here and in the corners. It's a sort of a chamfer or a button texture where the edges deliberately slope down towards the water to give you a nice gradual blend from the edge of the map to where it goes below water. So that's a default one there that's with no settings changed whatsoever. If I click on generate world again, it will redo this and it'll give us a different map. So that one also took 11 seconds and you can see there, look at that, a completely different map. And um, we've got a little town there with a trader, another town here with another trader. So if we want to customize this map and make it a bit of more of our own, we can go into the advanced settings here. Now this looks pretty scary, but it's actually not that bad. I'm only going to be looking in this video, I'm only looking at these two options, this option and this option. I'm going to leave those ones for another video if anybody's interested in seeing me do some more of this. So the first thing we've got here are the POIs and we've got the number of traders. Now I noticed there was only two traders in the last map, so I might want a few more traders. So if I can increase it from medium to increased. Now I haven't changed anything else. I'm just going to go back. If I hit generate world, see what we get. There we are. So it's a similar map. But if we have a look for the traders, we can see we have one here, we have another one here, and another one there up, and another one there. Traders location, you can change it from just being in the cities to somewhere out in the wilderness or anywhere, so random. The number of POIs in the wild, so if we go back there, we can see 
we've got quite a few. That's the red ones, the wild POIs. There's quite a few there. If it's too many, we can reduce that. This button here where it says medium, we can decrease the amount of them or we could have more if we wanted to. So if you've downloaded some custom POIs, you can add them to your maps by generating a custom POI list. Now I don't have any, so I can't demonstrate that. But you can see here, we can either stick with the vanilla ones that came with the game or we can use our custom list. The border is self-explanatory really, it's the edge of the map. What happens when you get to the edge of the map? So at the minute we've got water set, so it slopes off and goes into water and that's the end of your map. And I think that makes a lot of sense. So the options we've got are water, which is the default one that we've used at the moment. Then we could have it turn into a mountain range, I guess an, an impassable mountain range. That's not something that I particularly like, but you might. Uh, or you can just have it go flat. So the border size is the width of the water or how much is eaten into the map. I could change that to large and if we go back and generate a new world and there you can see this time that the chamfer or the slope now cuts in that little bit further so that means that the water will eat in slightly further to your map. Now the other options we've got here we can see city towns and villages so we can choose the size of our cities. We could say that we want particularly large cities and the same thing with towns and villages and so on. Then you can specify a number of cities, whether you want more cities. And the same thing with the towns and villages. And also the grid size. Now the grid size, if you can see in the picture at the top here, that's the grid there. So if you have a larger grid, it makes that box effectively bigger, which means you could get more buildings in between the roads. And then smaller, obviously, means less buildings. And that goes for cities, towns or villages. Now things get a little bit more interesting here with the landscape because we can choose that we want a specific landscape or a single biome. Uh, perhaps we only want the pine forest or we want a map that's only the desert or snow or burnt forest or wasteland. Now the random settings will default to having it mostly the pine forest and then it will drop on it in random locations, a desert, a snow, a burnt wasteland and so on. And then you can specify the sizes of those things that it drops on. So we could have, if we were more interested in having a large desert or if we didn't want any snow, we could say no snow. And then the burnt forest, maybe we don't like the burnt forest, it's disappearing in Alpha 20 anyway. Then the wasteland size, maybe we want that to be large as well. We can specify the height of mountains. Now this is the randomly generated mountains that it makes. We can say that whether we want them to be larger or smaller or maybe don't even have any mountains. The terrain roughness is the texture. You can see a sort of a speckly texture there, but maybe crumpled paper. You can increase or decrease that texture with the terrain roughness. And the spacing is, will it force the different biomes further apart from each other? So we could have them as far, as far apart as possible, or we could just have them a small distance away. So I've put all the settings back to the default, and this time I'm going to customize the map to my taste. I'm going to say that I would like larger cities. I'd like the grid size to be small, which will give me more roads in the cities. We'll not have the burnt forest. And the snow size, I'm not keen on too much snow, so I'm just going to say a small amount of snow. Now, what that'll actually do is it'll make the snow only spawn higher up. If you say you want more snow, it'll allow it to spawn lower down. So let's go back and we'll generate a world and then we'll try playing it. And there's our map. Look at the size of these cities here. These are absolutely huge now. So we've got a trader there, another trader there, another one there, and further down, there's another one there. Now there's not too much going on here because we've got a large mountain, but the snow isn't covering most of it. It's only the peaks. There's a little peak there as well. So if I want to actually run this map, what have I got to do? Well, first of all, we need to find out where this new map is stored. Then we need to put it where the game is going to see it and allow us to use it. So on the left hand side here, you can see there's an option to open up the King Gen worlds. And underneath that, there's an option there that will open up where the Seven Days to Die worlds are stored. So if I open up the King Gen worlds first, there it is there. That's the one that I've just created. I'm going to change it from King Gen world to, uh, well, I'll just add the word test to the end. Now I'm going to right click and cut it. Then I'm going to use the button here to open the seven days to die worlds. And you can see there's some that I've been playing with already. And there's my default one, the volure. If I right click here and say paste, there's the new one, this one here that we've just created. And we can have a look inside of this test world folder. If I double click at it, we can see that it's actually saved a preview of that map. And there it is. So this could be quite useful. So you can save this. You've got a copy of your own full map.
So I'm back in seven days today. I'm going to start up a new game. I'm going to choose the King Gen World test that we've just created. And I'll just say start. And we'll see roughly how long it takes. I've got a stopwatch going. So if you bear in mind that it can take 20 minutes, half an hour even, or longer to generate a world using the built-in world generator, random world generator in seven days to die. And it took us 12 seconds to make the, oh, here we go. That's it. So that was 38 seconds. So it took us 12 seconds to generate the map in the King Gen. And then it's taken us 38 seconds to get into the game from hitting start. So that's obviously way quicker. So already this looks pretty good here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit F1 and then type in DM, DM, enter and escape. Now I'm going to hit H. And when I use the space bar now, instead of jumping, I can fly. And I'm doing that just so I can see whereabouts we are on the map. And if I hold down shift, it lets me fly a bit quicker. Wow, look at the size of that city. That's fantastic. So there's the edge of the map there. And we'll just have a look at the transition from the ground. There we are. Transition from the map to the water. It looks pretty good. It's nice and smooth. And it's got that sort of um, weathered look where the water's been lapping around on it. That's quite nice. And actually, when you're down at water level, you can't really see the edge of the map. So that's that's worked quite well. So some things that can go wrong with, um, even with the Seven Days to Die auto generator or things like the um the roads can suddenly wander off let's just look at how the roads are handled in this you can see what's happening here is we've got a bit of a slope there but it's still kept the road flat it hasn't gone off like a twisted sort of roller coaster thing right and you can see there what's going on in order for it to be able to place these uh, buildings here it's had to carve out the the ground which i don't think is too bad oh is that a football stadium you know, I've never seen the football stadium in this game yet. And this is quite good as well. You can see what it's doing here when you're going from... Pardon me. When we're going from a higher piece of ground where it's got a dip and then levels out again, it's actually sloped off the roads at the sides to keep the road going nice and straight without having any crazy steep slopes in it. So the developer of this software is working on it constantly. And since I've been looking at it, it's been it's gone through two updates and the last one just being this morning. And you can see there's an area here that might need looking at where you've got a road that's going along between two POIs, but the end of the road is going into a lower POI. So it's just cut the terrain out to make it fit. I don't think it actually looks that bad, but this a little bit awkward when you've got that step like that, but I wouldn't be too concerned about that. I'm still very impressed with uh, how the software is working. So I've gone back into the King Gen software. I've left the settings exactly as they were. Oh, the only thing I've changed is I've changed the world size from 4K to 12K and then I hit generate now and it's working it out. And there we go. So there's the 12K version of the map and that one it says on the left there that it took two minutes to do. And I don't think that's too bad to be honest with you. What I can do here is I can use the mouse wheel. It'll let me zoom in just one click so I can get that a little bit closer. It looks like there's pretty much a trader in every city, but this is quite a big map. But again, you can change how many traders there are to a higher or lower chance of them appearing and also where you want them to appear. There's loads in this one. So that's a pretty big map. There's a lot of cities to explore and I think it would take you a long time to see everything there. But you can go on from here and you can actually design the size and the shape of the biomes yourself. Using some of the more advanced features of King Gen, you can create a map like this. Now I've just downloaded a height map of the UK and my house is somewhere around there in real life. And I've had a little bit of play on it and it's actually very good. It works really well. It's not that straightforward to do, but I'm happy to do a tutorial video on that. If that's something that you'd like to see, just let me know in the comments. Well, thanks very much for watching. I've been Tall Man Brad. This was King Gen Software, King Gen, and it's completely free. Check out the website and download it and give it a go for yourself. Please like the video before you leave and check out my page for other similar videos. I do a lot of Let's Plays and a few tutorials on other games. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.